was my first Halloween living in my own house away from my parents. I live in a small corner house with a basement but no upstairs, a house my parents paid half for. It was 11 o'clock at night, I was sitting in the living room watching scary Halloween movies when I found myself getting up to answer a knock at the door. But then I stopped and thought, who could be at the door at 11 p.m.? Surely there were no more trick-or-treaters out. I had a pretty good feeling it was a late night Halloween ding-dong ditcher, so I gave it a second, then I shot a glance to the porch through the window. They were gone already. Yup, ding-dong ditchers. I sat back down not thinking twice about it, and again, knocking at the front door. Get lost, I yelled. I was not in the mood for punky kids. They ignored my demands and started pounding now, not just knocking. I was pissed now. I leaped up and swung the door open. No one was there once again. I slipped on my shoes and headed outside to begin searching the bushes for the kids, but there was nobody in sight. Not in the bushes, not behind my car, not across the street. I was done answering. I didn't want to feed into their fun anymore, so I went back inside, double locked the door, and went to my bedroom, also locking that door, just to feel safer, I guess. Even over the TV, I could still hear the stupid kids pounding on my front door repeatedly. I was so close to calling the cops to get them away, but that would undoubtedly lead to my house being egged or teepeed. The pounding continued for an uncomfortably long time, more than half an hour. I thought these kids must be filming something for YouTube and were desperate for a reaction, but I wasn't going to give it to them. At some point I dozed off with the TV on, only to wake up to the knocking again. I looked at the clock. It was two in the fucking morning. How could those kids still be at it, I thought. I turned the TV off and sat up with my ears open. For a few moments, my heart completely stopped as I realized the knocking was not at my front door, but rather at my bedroom door. I jumped out of bed, looking around my room like a madman for something to use as a weapon. They knew I was awake now. They were trying the doorknob, trying to bust down the door. These weren't any kids. By some miracle, I came up with an idea. It was a long shot, but it was all I could think of. I turned on the receiver to my speaker system, plugged in my iPhone, brought up the YouTube app, typed in 45 gunshot sound effect, turned on the volume and pressed play. The sound of a gunshot echoed out of the speakers. It sounded real enough. I paused the video after the first shot and yelled, That was a warning shot. Leave now or I won't hesitate to shoot you in the head. And it worked. I heard two pairs of footsteps stomping over my wood floors and out the front door. I gave it a moment before opening my bedroom door and peeking outside. They were gone, but the front door was left wide open. I quickly shut it, called the police, and that's where my story ended. When I was about 16, I lived in a small town. We had this abandoned house in my neighborhood. It was huge, almost big enough to call it a mansion, but it had been an empty house for a while. One day on the first day of summer vacation, I suggested investigating inside of that house. All of my friends agreed. A few days later, around 7.30 p.m., we snuck into the house. The inside of the house had been burnt pretty badly, which we thought was the reason why the house was abandoned. Everything was kind of cool, but old and countrified. We started to check all of the upstairs and downstairs of the house, even the basement. Just at that moment, I saw something darting across the room. I started getting nervous, but then I thought to myself, it might be a squirrel or a raccoon, and brushed away my doubts. Then I went to the second floor, and my friends followed me. I opened the door, and there was a human-sized teddy bear sitting in the desk chair, facing us. We were spooked for a moment, but it didn't stop us from exploring further. We went to the third floor, and while we were searching around and taking some stuff, someone told us to look up. When we looked toward the wall, we could see the writing, Get Out. However, we all laughed. We talked about how brave we were, and then turned around to head back downstairs. All of a sudden, one of my friends, Jay, whispered that he saw something moving behind me. 
I turned around with my flashlight, but nothing was there. Feeling weird, we went down to the second floor again. Then, when we looked into the second floor room, I swear to God, the teddy bear was gone. Everybody in the house said nothing at all. We all agreed that we should leave this house as soon as possible. There was a door which was connected to the kitchen, so we approached the kitchen. But just at that moment, one of my friends gasped. Everybody slowly turned around, and the teddy bear was there. It was sitting at the dinner table looking towards us, and when we raised our heads upwards, we could see the writing on the walls. Get out! Getting caught or not, I wanted to leave. I wanted to be out of there. I ran out of the kitchen, but I couldn't take one step further. There was a man who was standing there. He was blocking our way through the door. He was holding a knife. He seemed like he was almost in his mid-forties. We just stood there, staring at him, without saying anything or screaming. The man was blocking our way and he took a step forward, staring at us with a big, wide smile. Then one of my fearless friends that found an old hockey stick from one of the rooms stepped in front of me and shouted to him not to come any closer. The man didn't say anything. He took a couple of steps back and slowly crawled into a big hole behind a seat chair in the corner of the room. We couldn't believe what we had just seen. Without any hesitation, we ran for our lives after he disappeared. As soon as we managed to get out, everyone started to run away in a hurry. As I was following them, I turned around and I saw it. The man stood in the window and waved to us, smiling peacefully like nothing had ever happened. When we finally reached a safe place, far away from that house, we all just stood there thinking that it was the most horrible nightmare we had ever experienced. After that night, I never sneak into houses, especially any abandoned houses. I don't know what to do. It all started three weeks ago. My mom disappeared. She was at home in the morning, nothing different. She hugged me, saying goodbye, wished me luck with school, and gave me a packed lunch. And when I got home that evening, she wasn't there. She didn't come back. So we called the police and all of the search was set up. The whole town came together and held a giant search party, lasting through the night, but there was no sign of her at all. She had just completely vanished. The weeks since were hell for both me and my dad. Rumors started spreading through town, and particularly around the school, that my mom had been murdered. Dad took things a lot worse than I did. He was a carpenter, so it wasn't unusual behavior for him to disappear into the garage for a long time to work on a chair or table or something. Especially, it was what he always did when he was stressed. I figured that's just how he was dealing with the grief. We barely spoke over the next couple weeks. He was locked in there from sunrise to midnight. And we might bump into each other at one point, but he'd just say goodnight and went to bed. Sure, it was a bit weird, but I understood that he was going through a lot. But the longer he spent in there, the less I was sure he was doing woodwork. There were large bottles of bleach popping up in our bins, and Dad barely took any break. One night, I had waited for him to go to sleep, and I crept down to try to open the door. But it was locked tight, and Dad always had the key. But today, when I came home from school, he was in the kitchen, freshly shaved, showered, had a rested face. He was totally different from what he'd been for the last couple of weeks. He was cooking. My dad used to love grilling, and his steaks were always amazingly delicious. So it was a nice change, since I fed myself only pot noodles and soup for a few weeks. He set down two of the biggest, bloodiest steaks I had ever seen in my life. But it looked kind of different. Not bad, but just different. Dad tucked into a steak straight away, and I did too. 
It was a bit tough to chew, but the seasoning and flavors tasted just as good as the rest of the steaks were. We had finished pretty soon, and I was feeling full and satisfied. Then Dad said something I can't stop thinking about. I doubt they'll ever find her body. His voice didn't sound sad or depressed. I didn't say anything, just stared at him. Hearing what he said sent shivers down my spine. Then I thought of the stakes. The late nights in the garage, hundreds of bleach bottles, and my dad's weird behavior. Did he feed me her body? Or am I just overthinking it? What do I do?